Hello everyone. Today we are going to solve a problem on kinetics of a rigid body topic. So this V turned with a constant clockwise angular velocity of 30 radian per second. This E has a weight of 60 pounds and it initially at rest when it is brought into contact with D. Determine the time required for this E to attain the same angular velocity as this V. The coefficient of kinetic friction between the two disks is 0.3. Neglect the weight of the bar BC. So basically we have the acceler the angular velocity of disk D. We want to find the time that it takes that disk E also has the same angular velocity. So whenever we talk about the time that it takes, so we need a kinematic equation. We need to find alpha the angular acceleration so we can find the time that it takes for this E to reach 30 radian per second. Uh, so let's write our knowns and unknown. We know mu k is 0.3. We know omega d is 30 radian per second. And we know the weight of disk E to be uh, of 60 pounds. And the question is asking for the time that it takes so the two disks would have the same velocity. The first task in solving kinetics of a rigid body problems is to draw free body diagram as well as the kinetic diagram. The disk of interest is E, so I'm going to draw the free body diagram of disk E. So for disk E, I have normal force is fixed at B. So I have reaction forces. I call them BX and BY. You can assume any direction. At the end, if you get a negative value, the direction that you assume is incorrect. And I have 60 pound weight. Also, I have the friction force that is acting to the right. And the magnitude of friction force is proportional to coefficient of friction as well as the normal force. And also if I draw the kinetic diagram, at the center is fixed, so I don't have any acceleration, any linear acceleration. All I have would be I B alpha. And the point B is both center of gravity and also a fixed point that this E is rotating about. Uh, I can draw also the free body diagram of disk D. Sometimes it helps to draw the whole free body diagram so you know how the forces are acting. You know this is the angular velocity that we have. So the friction force is resisting the motion and the two friction forces are equal, just the opposite direction. If you pay attention to the direction of friction forces. So now we can write our uh, equations. So for a 2D, we have three equations, summation of forces in X equals MA, but because in rigid body different points have different acceleration, we just write this equation for center of gravity. Summation of forces in Y, MA, which point of rigid body is center of gravity. And also summation of moment, we have multiple options, but here writing about the center, which is both center of gravity and a fixed point and I assume counterclockwise to be positive. I know the center of gravity does not have any acceleration, so my force equation actually looks like a static problem. Summation of forces equal zero. So let's start with uh, my first equation, summation of force in X direction would be zero. I have my friction force, mu n, mu is 0.3, n, I don't know the value, and then I have negative Bx, the reaction force of pin B equals zero. Then summation of forces in Y, I have the normal force, 
I have the weight acting 60 pounds. Also, I have negative BY equal zero. Summation of moment would be my third equation. Summation of moment about point B equals IB alpha. The only force that is gonna create a moment would be the friction force. It's creating the counterclockwise. The magnitude is 0.3 N. The moment arm is the radius of our disc, which is one. Moment of inertia of a disc is half M. I have the weight, so I need to divide it by 32.17 to get the mass in slug. R is one and then alpha. So if I look at my three equation, I have N as an unknown, BX, that would be my second unknown, BY, the third unknown, and also alpha. So I have four unknowns and only three equations. That means that I cannot solve this problem the way I set up my equation. So I need to go back to see if I can hunt another equation for uh, my unknowns. So if you look at the free body diagram, here the free body diagram has three unknowns. So if it was an aesthetic problem, we had no problem. It was just three unknowns, we could solve it. But here we have an acceleration. So we, we get one unknown from our kinetic diagram. So if we go back to the problem, we see that rod BC is a two force member because forces are only acting at point B and at, and at point C. So the definition of a two force member is a member that forces are acting only at two points on that member. It does not mean that it has only two forces, but at two points, the forces are acting. So that means I have, let's say it's called it FB, FC for the rod to be in equilibrium the forces should be equal and opposite direction, FB and FC. But how does this help us in reducing the number of unknowns? When we know the direction of FB, that means that we know the relation between BX and BY. So we don't have two unknown, BX and BY represent one unknown for us. According to the geometry, this is two feet, this is two feet, so this angle would be 45 degrees. And so I have FB, BX would be FB cosine 45 and BY would be FB sine 45. So if I write it here, BX, FB cosine 45, B, FB cosine or sine 45 is 45. So it really doesn't matter which one is cosine and which one is sine. So if I replace BY and BX in these two equations, so they represent only one unknown based on FB. So I can uh, find FB N and N. So replacing in my first two equation, I find FB to be 36.37 pound, and also N to be 85.7 pound. And now that I have FB and N, this is my third equation. I can replace N in my third equation, and my only unknown would be alpha, so I can find alpha to be 27.6 radian per second squared. But the question is not asking for alpha. The question is asking for the time that it takes for disk E to reach the same angular velocity as disk D. I can write the kinematic equation because I have a constant angular acceleration. It starts from rest, so the initial loss, angular velocity would be zero, alpha, would be omega, sorry, T time, we know alpha, T would be uh, omega over alpha. We found alpha and omega is 10, omega is 30, so 30 over 27.6 will give me the time that it takes for disk E to reach the same angular velocity as disk 
d. So it would be 1.0877 uh, seconds. 